In this lesson, we are going to connect to the server, that is to say to establish a two-way communication channel between the client, the player's machine, and your web server. This builds upon the authentication from the previous video. Let's get started. Back where we left off, we're going to head back to our server connection to write that server code. And connecting to the server involves creating a socket. A socket is a technical term for a pipe line that connects your client and the web server. So let's create a new variable, call it underscore socket, and it's going to be of type Nakama socket. Sockets allow you to send messages to the server, but also to receive messages from the server. Now we're going to create a function called connect to server. So function connect to server async. As always, it's going to be an asynchronous process. We're going to return from the start error can't uh, connect. These error codes are all part of Godot. They are built in constants. Now, the thing we're going to do here is ask the Nakama API to create a socket first. To do so, we can use our client. So the Nakama class has a create socket from method to which you can pass your client and it will return a Nakama socket object. The Nakama socket has an API that allows you to send messages or requests to the server, like one to connect. To connect to the server, we're going to use the socket API. So now we have our socket object. This is not asynchronous, by the way. The object gets created instantly. We can call methods on it. Connect async is one of them, and it's the method that allows you to connect to the server. This one takes our session object as an argument. It's asynchronous, so we have to yield over it. I'm going to add some parentheses around that, use the yield keyword, and wait for the function call to be completed. Then we're going to store the result from that call again. So we're going to create a result variable. It's going to be of type nakama async result, and it's going to store the resulting object there. From that object, we can check that our socket did connect to the server successfully. So we can say, if not result dot is exception, Nakama async result has this method here, we can return OK. We could connect to the server successfully. Now, we can do a bit more than that from the socket, and this is where it gets interesting. So you will be able to use the socket API. I'll click on connect async to jump to the source code where you have all the code documentation. So you have lots of uh, methods like add a matchmaker, create a match, etc., to create a match between players. Well, all sorts of things you want to do in your game, but you also have lots of signals, as you can see at the top of the Nakama socket class. You will get, for example, a signal telling you when a socket was closed. Imagine that it was closed by the server closing the connection, then you can free your socket to ensure that you won't call methods on it. You also have some messages you can receive from the server telling you that other players are connected, like receive channel presence, this is for the chat. You also have received match presence telling you that another player joined or left a match, a game you are part of. Anyway, let's go back to server connection. We're going to connect to one of these. Let's say socket.connect. We're going to use the simplest one here, closed. So the connection was closed by the server. We're going to connect to that node and create a new method for the callback called on Nakama socket closed. This one's somewhat important. If the connection was closed, you don't want to use that socket object anymore because if you try to call something over it, it's not going to work. So you can create that callback function on Nakama socket closed, and you can set the socket variable to null. Doing so will free the Nakama socket object. And the reason is, I'm going to go back to Nakama socket and to the top of the file, that the node extends reference. It's implied whenever you create a GDScript file. This is the base type that you necessarily extend when you have an empty GDScript class. Reference is a class that's reference counted, meaning that when you don't have any references to an instance of the class, the object in question will get freed from memory. 
So setting our socket to null, if nothing is referencing it, is going to free our socket from memory. Now we're done with the technical lingo, we can go back to our demo code. So through the scene, I'm going to click on the script icon next to demo, and we're going to call our connect to server uh, async function. I'm going to create a new function called connect to server. I should call it async as well, but for the sake of being coherent with the final demo code, I'm going to stick to what we have on the repository. So we're going to create a result variable from the start. We're going to call server connection dot connect server async that we just wrote, and we know it returns an integer, an error code. And we're going to yield over that call, so server connection dot connect to server asynchronous. We're going to wait for the process to complete, and then you can use the print function, and I'm going to use my debug panel that we use in this series. So if the result is okay, we're going to write a message to the debug panel. We connect it to the server. Otherwise, uh, we can say if we get error can't connect, because we know that's the error code that we are going to receive, we're going to say could not connect. With that, in the ready function, we can add a new line. As always, we're going to yield connect to server and we're going to wait for it to complete. It's just as a base for the next step in the series for the next lesson. But with that, you can press F5 to see that we authenticate still as before and we have a message connected to the server. With that, we have the server connection established. In the next segment, I'm going to show you how we implemented similar code in the final Godot Nakama demo, which is much more complex. So I'm going to give you an overview of that code. And in the next lesson, we'll talk about joining the game world, joining a match. In the final demo, the server connection happens way after the login. So you first log in, and it happens right there when you confirm the character you want to use and you enter the game. The server connection, the creation of the socket to communicate with the server happens between these two parts. Let's see how exactly. So I'm gonna to go to the main menu.gd script from the main menu scene and navigate down to join game world async. This is where the server connection is happening. Let me expand the script editor. So here, you can see that we have a call to join world async. This is something we will talk about in the next lesson. The connect to server is very similar to what we did. We call connect to server async on server connection. So this is about the same so far as what we did in our connect to server async function from the demo. I'm going to control click on this to jump to the server connection script. And there you can see there's a little more code. So same thing, we create a socket from the client using the Nakama API. We then call socket.connectAsync. The session in the final demo is stored on a delegate class called Authenticator. So instead of being underscore session, it's stored in a separate class that stores the session from the user. And then instead of using result.isException, we have a little helper class that's going to pass the exception and return an integer for us. So it converts the nakamizing result to an integer, but it does a bit more than that. Anyway, if our result is okay, then we connect to the various signals that we want to connect to on the socket API. Connected, closed, received an error, match present, we will, which we'll talk about a bit later. And that is it. It's very similar to what we did in the basic demo. We just do a bit more. We connect to a few more signals. I'm going to jump to one of these callbacks or search for it. It seems I can't jump to it like that. So you can see that when the socket gets closed, we set the socket to null, just like in our basic demo. Then we have some more code when we receive new match presences from the Nakama server. This is a server telling us that a user left or joined the world we are part of. So if you're in a game level, if you're in a first person shooter match, if you're in a PVP battle in some mobile game, this callback 
and the received match presence signal from the Nakama Socket API will allow you to spawn and remove players from an ongoing game. For example, if they disconnect, those kinds of things. We'll talk about the rest a bit later. This big function here is the one that handles the changes in the game state when you are playing with other players in real time. But that's about it. It's all to say that you have main menu dot join game world async that has that connection to server. And then in server connection, you have the on Nakama socket callbacks that listen to the server that get messages from the server and do things based on that. But with that, let's head to the next lesson to talk about that matchmaking. See you there.